All right, then let's take a look at the European markets. They ended sharply higher, bouncing back after the global equity sell-off that took place in the previous trading session. So the French, German, as well as uh, uh, the British index was all of them. All of them were up by about a percent, a percent and a half. The key outperformer out there, the German index. Remember, in the previous trading session, that one was the key underperformer. The stocks that bounced back were the stocks that also saw a bit of a sell-off. So we saw banks, auto stocks, as well as technology stocks, which were bouncing back in yesterday's trading sessions. Banks were also performing in trade as Italian banks surged amid reports that the Deputy Prime Minister could review the government's 2019 budget. So that is something that the street will be keeping an eye out on primarily given the fiscal deficit concerns as far as Italy is concerned. In terms of the Brexit developments, UK Prime Minister Theresa May discussed the current state of negotiations in the market space. However, we saw the Brazilian index lower by about three quarters of a percent. But remember, the Brazilian index has been a standout performer in this year itself. It has gained about 15 percent and the Russian index ended with a gain of about percent. Okay, well, let's tell you about the currency space then. The dollar index weakened and uh, treasuries clawed back from an early retreat and speculation the Fed Reserve may soften its stance on raising interest rates in the December meeting. Oil prices recover marginally, though US crude inventories continue to pressure. But an unexpected supply cut by OPEC nations is offering some support. Remember, OPEC and its allies are set to meet on December 6th to discuss supply cuts. The Saudis signaled last week in Abu Dhabi that they are prepared to make a major reduction in their crude output, to basically scale it back by at least 500,000 barrels. That is not what President Trump wants. So it's going to be very, very important to see what happens to Saudi production policy. It's my view that at the end of the day, self-preservation and economic welfare is going to be the most important to the Saudi leadership. So I believe that they will continue to anchor a large production cut. I mean, if Saudi Arabia is not going to pull any barrels, then there's really no discussion about an OPEC cut. But it's really in their economic self-interest to do so. So I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens right after that OPEC meeting. If they pull those barrels, how does President Trump respond? And at the same time, you have the U.S. Congress, you know, both sides of the aisle, pushing for tougher sanctions on Saudi Arabia. Whilst oil markets were very finely balanced, literally a few months ago, uh, policy-led increase in production from three major producers, U.S., Russia and Saudi Arabia has just taken the supply above the demand now. And now, basically, this is the excess that we have in the market, and we will keep going down if OPEC does nothing going forward. So if you really want a correction in the supply-demand balances back to a balanced market, you need an intervention. And OPEC really needs to act here in order to re reduce that excess that it has itself uh, created, and it's a self-fulfilling act now. And if they don't do anything, we will see prices going down, unfortunately, because the markets are absolutely unbalanced at this point. The U.S. foreign policies has definitely made it difficult for to, to take a view of OPEC-led policies. And that's one of the biggest difficulties here is that will OPEC on 6th and 7th of December be able to take an independent decision of doing what it needs to do as it has always done in the past or will it not do at this point?